gosh. Thanks for having me here in the special sip and sink area. I just made my coffee in the cozy eye kitchen. That, that is amazing. Thank you for being here, John. And welcome to Sip and Sink with Asher. I mean, it's like, people, right? yeah, I feel less stressed. I don't have to cook right now. Perfect. Yes, that's why we have you. And I want to talk about a very important topic, agentic experiences. Mm. But before we do that, I'd love for our audience to know a little bit about you. What do you do at Microsoft today? Yeah, well, I'm uh, just a programmer. I just uh, code, 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 and try to figure out how to get more businesses to leverage AI and its unusual impacts. And um, it's the best time to be a coder right now. Yes. AI codes alongside you. Absolutely. So you mentioned businesses, and that is where my first question is. There's lots of businesses and leaders and decision makers that are thinking of which projects to use AI in and invest in. Mm -hmm. And so that is my first question. How do you decide and guide the business leaders right. to be investing in the right projects? Right. Well, when you think about business leaders today, they're aware of this thing called ChatGPT. Yep. And it's very chatty and it can do stuff. And you're like, oh my gosh, it talks, it talks back, whatever. And so the first wave of AI value has come from the customer support use case. Like, you know, like I need to find the size of my whatever. Oh, I can find it for you. And it's a chat kind of thing that a human can assist in yep. or an agent can assist in as well. Um, and then once that use case dries up, the question becomes, what do I do with it besides that? Yep. And that's where it gets very exciting. Yep. So let's get into that. That's kind of where the agentic experiences also lie, right? So first, before we get into the agentic experiences, what's the difference between agentic AI and agents? Oh, super easy question. Um, so all of you out there who are a bit confused, who weren't ready for the agent version of the AI sort of era. Um, Gen 1 was discovery of this word, pre-trained foundation model. Yep. Word. So it's like, oh my gosh, I need a model. Oh, this is a GPT, whatever, or Red Pajama Hot Pants 17B, or all these names. Like, I got to figure out these models. Yep. And I take models, and I attach prompts to it. It's doing AI. And then I thought I was happily chugging along. And then agents. And like, agents, they're supposed to be something different. No, they're actually just a higher level term mm -hmm. to use to describe what happens when you have a model and you have prompts and knowledge and you do stuff with it. And the first wave of that was I can chat to it. Yeah. But this new wave of business applications is really about getting more work done. Because let's say you have some kind of work that you can describe a process to. And you can like, you know, step one, step two, step three. Yep. But a regular computer program would be like, I don't know how to read that text file. Can you parse it for me? And you'll sit there, whether Beautiful Soup 4 or whatever, yeah. and like struggle to get it to understand the unstructured data. But now, with just one line, have your agent interpret the text. Uh, tell me what the names are in this file. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. What are the important things to our business, which happens to be selling corn? Boom. So... It's like a magic sort of um, go fish system yeah. to go through business data, give you structure, go through workflows, and get work done. Workflow, workflow. Exactly. And with that workflow and, and use cases, right, when you mention those steps and how I do a job and I write those steps down and operationalize those, some of it is synchronous and some of it is asynchronous. Yes. And so we can have these agents yep. go off to asynchronous things and also some of those examples that you talked about where you're doing it synchronous, like work with me and work for me mm -hmm. to different things, right? What are your thoughts on synchronous and asynchronous agents and how they work together? That you hit the nail on, I mean, it's a, you know, this, Smells so good here in this in this environment. <laughs> um, you know, you hit the nail there because I, as a human, yep. have written out the steps. Yeah, I've written out a workflow, and maybe I was having a good day, and I just I got it right. Maybe I was having kind of a bad day. I'm really tired, and I wrote that workflow. It's not going to be a good workflow. True, my work wasn't workflowed well. Or I didn't have coffee. And yeah, I didn't have, you know, I didn't have this, I didn't have a place to hang out and sip and sing. Um, but what's, what we learned in the GPT-4 boom, the sonic boom or whatever we call it, is that these models can plan. 
you know, they don't just complete the sentence, they can plan. So two years ago, the discovery that they could plan two years later right now means, oh, I'd like to do X, the job to be done. It can construct the plan as a workflow. Mm -hmm. It can execute those steps either synchronously or asynchronously. Yeah. But the challenge is having engineers and product managers who know how to cook these recipes. That's why you have the Cozy AI Kitchen. We're trying to like teach some recipes, also sit in the sink. So if you can learn how to cook, all this becomes possible. But if you don't, it's sort of AI fan fiction. Yeah, exactly. And so that brings me to my next question, which, yeah. which is the agentic experience. Yes. We are moving from the era of user experience transforming into agentic experience, agents talking to each other, thoughts, views. How would you explain that? Yeah. So in the beginning, there was the command line yep. is a book by Neil Stevenson. It's a very nerdy book, but it's kind of like a manifesto for how when we programmers programmed the earth, we would type in things to the command line and we could tell it what to do. Yep. But then this terrible graphical user interface thing arrived and these like sort of slick wrappers around the command line enabled anyone else to use a computer. Mm -hmm. So we now in the GUI revolution are decades in and the reality is that the GUI is kind of kind of GUI. Have you ever used a GUI and like, how do I use that GUI, right? <laughs> yeah. So we've made giant GUIs, giant obstacle courses to actually do what is easier yeah. at the command line. But the command line is hard to work with. Right. What is good at using the command line is an AI agent. An AI agent is an ace at typing in all the commands. So. When we let the agent type in the commands, we move from UX to AX. So we have to not design user experiences for users, yeah. design them for agents. Then on our behalf, they'll be able to get stuff done. Yep. So I'm also hearing this term floated around quite a bit, which is English is the new coding language. Yeah. Can we talk a little bit about that? Oh my gosh, yeah. yes. Well, that is a very trendy thing to say if you are a fan of linguistics and English and you're a fan of the humanities. Yes. And I see I told you <laughs> liberal arts is the key to the future, which it is. I don't want to say otherwise. Okay. Um, but it's not just English is a new programming language. It's English plus computational thinking. Exactly. If you don't understand how computer science works and you go in and talk English, it's not going to actually do the thing that you want to do. You'll vibe code, it'll vibrate, yeah. but do nothing. <laughs> but if you can code yeah. and you can code in English, you can create systems that can do multi-step reasoning, yeah. multi-step work, solve unstructured data problems that you can never solve. Yeah. And then suddenly you're showing your boss, like, I just did this thing and it used to take like two days. It's done in an hour yeah. or even like a minute. What you highlighted there is... English plus the domain expertise so that you can Absolutely. create those prompts and give the right context yes. so that you can vote. That's amazing. Okay. With that, last question. Risks. We started with business leaders. What are the risks in AI? What are the boards worried about? Right. Well, we do board work. Yes. Right? And boards are there to uh, not be bored, of course, yes. <laughs> but to deal with the boring and important topic of risk. Yep. Um, and the thing we learn in business is that risk is actually a good thing. You know, more risk, more reward, yeah. right? And so uh, when I worked in the uh, security industry, I learned this phrase, be risk versed, not risk averse. Yep. So the way you become more risk versed with all of this AI stuff is to not play in the world of AI fan fiction, to actually go into the code, mix the prompts, try different models, different orchestrations, vibe code it at first, and then sort of go deeper, and you'll discover what it really can do and can't do. Mm. So you can guide your team as an executive. And people tell me, well, you know, the first rule of the manager is to be hands off. I will tell you right now, if you aren't learning and sipping and sinking and cozy AI kitcheningning, um, you're kind of 
out there hallucinating. Yeah. Sound familiar? <laughs> so true. Um, leaders, business leaders, every single person right now needs to be on top of their learning game. Yes. Continuing to learn to be to be do, making those right decisions yeah. in the age of AI. Yeah. All right, John, this was amazing. Thank you Thank so you. much for being on the show. Oh, love to be here. Uh, you're always welcome to the Cozy AI Kitchen, of course. Yes, we'll totally make that happen. Thank you so much for joining us today in this episode of Sip and Sync with Azure. And we will uh, add all of the links in the description below for resources and things that you might be interested in. And with that, we'll see you next time. Thank you.